June 24th, 1989. I have no clue why I remember that date specifically. I had just finished spending my second year of university in Israel. It was a Saturday night. It was Motzei Shabbat. I had a flight out at 5 the next morning to go to Marseille. Went out with a bunch of my friends. We decided it's our last night in Israel. I wasn't the only one leaving the next day. Let's go up to the Kotel. Let's go up to the Western Wall. So we did. Yay. Yeah, yay. Exactly. That's the right response. Thank you. We went up to the Kotel. While we're there, I start talking. We, we started talking with some guy who was there. You know, clearly of the black hat. Yes, he was Jewish. <laughs> clearly of the black hat variety. You know, one of the Hasidic sects. And we just started chatting. So, you know, what were you doing? Oh, we were in Israel for the last year. We were here for the last year. Oh. Where did you study? Or, or what were you doing here? I said, we were students up at the university. Then he asked the following question. He said, did you put on tefillin? I lied. I said sometimes. That was a big exaggeration. I wasn't at that point in my life yet. And then I said something which I still believe to this very day. It's more important not to be a murderer than it is to put on the film. I still believe that. I want to make that absolutely clear. His response to me was, But someone who puts on tefillin will never become a murderer. That's where the conversation ended. Let's move ahead to January 2001. I was on Guam visiting the USS Frank Cable, a submarine tender based out of Guam. And the chaplain on board made sure that the Jewish sailors who were assigned to the ship came to see me. I'm chatting with a couple, chat, 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 chat. And finally, I'm about to report back to their chaplain. These are the things I think they need, this is what's happening. And I said to them, just out of curiosity, do you have a set of tefillin? Do you need a set of tefillin? Chatted a little bit more. I ended up making arrangements for that. End of that story. Six months later, I'm in Toronto, not here, downtown. The rabbinical assembly is having its annual convention here. I run into the scribe who made my tefillin. And it had been seven years since I had gotten them. I asked him to check them. I told him this last time. He said, you don't have to do that, but whatever. I asked him to check my tefillin. Brought him, brought my, brought him my tefillin right after Minion. He said, I will leave them here for you. They'll be ready to go tomorrow morning. I couldn't find them. I couldn't find them. Yeah. I had no clue where they were. The lady behind the counter at the hotel desk where he said he'd leave them didn't know what I was talking about. And I was going absolutely bananas. Folks, I have no clue. I have no clue what got me from being at the hotel, telling this guy, well, yeah, sometimes you put on to fill in. I have no clue what got me from there to downtown Toronto 12 years later, going crazy because I can't find my tefillin. I don't know what got me from point A to point B. What I do know is this. I will give up on sleep to make sure I have enough time to do it every morning. If I have to be out the door at 6 a.m., I will be up at 5.30, 5.15, to make sure I have the time to do it. If 6 a.m. happens to be too early to put on the fill-in, 
which happens even you know, right now, 6 a.m. is too early. I will build time into my day to make sure it happens. My day is off. It doesn't flow correctly if I have not put them on. 